Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to the official virtual experience, virtual iChurch experience for Impact Church. It's New Year's Eve, and we're going to have an awesome time tonight. Listen, do me a favor. Before we get started with service, can you click the share button, whether you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on Facebook Live? As well, if you're brand new and you've never been here before, do me a favor and type the word new in the chat. That's N-E-W. Type that in the chat. You can feel free to click the link in the chat as well and fill out a connection card to stay connected and plugged into Impact Church. If you need special prayer anytime during the service, you can ask for prayer in the chat. Our intercessors are live in there with you. They'll pray with you and they will get you together. Amen. Also, if you want to be more discreet, there's also a link for prayer that you can fill out that prayer card and submit it and we'll pray with you. Amen. All right, we're getting ready to jump into service. It's gonna be a different kind of a service. We're gonna have music, we're gonna have some reflection of this year, some videos, and a word that's gonna bless you. So I want you to get ready, get in your seats. Uh, again, if you have not shared, share, tag your friends, your mama, or your daddy, everybody with you so we can enjoy worship together as one body. I wanna pray with you, and then we're gonna get into service. Father, I pray right now for our brothers and sisters that are watching and listening right now. I pray, God, that you will bring our hearts together so that when we sing, we sing together. When we worship, we worship together. When we hear, we'll hear together the word that will elevate us, that will lift us to our next level, into our next season, and that we will accomplish our next victory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we have a lot going on in this service and we want to get started with it. I'll see you after this. Praise the Lord, guys. Listen, we're so excited and amped up to have you with us at Impact Church, our home to your home. This Sunday morning, I get to present my nephew. I watched this young man grow up. He is an amazing artist, and his team is going to perform for us this morning, minister to you right where you are in the season we're in right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius James. I can breathe Won't you really miss me I can breathe Won't you really miss me I won't resist I will comply no, I'm not a threat. Um, I'm just a human being. So come and see about me. I can breathe. Won't you release me? Yeah. I Resist. Oh, I will comply. I'm not a threat. Oh, I'm just a human being. So I, I part of a thousand stories and what they think you're like but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that's your police that I, I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are but I'm loved by you it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. So you're a good, good father. It's who you are, yeah. It's who you are, it's who you are. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Yeah. It's who I am. So you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm 
Hey, this year has been filled with ups and downs and um, many of us have experienced loss this year. And if you're watching, uh, it, it's touched all of us. Uh, this pandemic has touched every single one of us. And um, there are so many of our heroes that have gone on to be with the Lord. We, we at Impact Church have lost a few of our members, Andre Withers, um, brother Gerald Thompson, and our very own elder Thomas Barber all went on to be with the Lord this year. Not all from COVID, but all have gone on to be with the Lord this year. And we send our prayers to your family and those loved ones that have gone too soon. And we pray for you as well. So this little tribute is for them. I'll see you afterwards. Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, um, we thank God for that tribute there forever in our hearts. And we are praying with you and for you and your family as well. Uh, this year has been a crazy kind of year. It's forced us to be in quarantine and we have not had live in-person service except for our outdoor service, which was spectacular in October. But we have not had a live in-person service since March 22nd. Uh, and it's been filled with a lot of uh, virtual experiences that have been blessing people and touching people all over the world. But I want to go back and pull from some of those services, some of the awesome music that we heard. We had some very special guests to minister to us while they were quarantined too. Uh, none other than my sister, Evangelist Dorinda Clark Cole, my little sis, Alexis Spite, and now she's my sis again, Marette Brown Clark, who are going to minister to you. And in between some of these different songs, you're going to see some messages from some of our impactors. 
letting you know how they're positioning themselves to step into 2021. I'll be back after this presentation. God bless you, everybody. I'm Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole, and I just want to say Pastor Keenan and Lady Danielle Knox, we love you so, so very much. And to the Impact family, I want to just say that I'm so glad to be able to join you all in service on today. And certainly just want to give a uh, encouraging word to those that are watching to let you know that God has not forgotten about you. There's so much that God is about to do, even during this pandemic. If you could just hold on to God's word every time God gives you a word, hold on to it and know that God is not shorter than his promise. He's able to bring you through it because he did it before. And guess what? He's going to do it again. I got a little song that I want to leave with you just to encourage your spirits on today. And it simply says that I'm still here. And it's by the grace of God. So you hold on. Things are going to get better. And the song simply says, Oh, when I look back over my life, yes, and I see all the things God's done for me. We've been through danger, heartaches, and trouble. I thank the Lord, he's rescued me, oh, we could have been dead and gone, but the Lord, he spared my, my life, oh yes he did. That I'm still here, you are too, and it's by the grace, the grace of God. Oh, when we all look back over our life and we see all the things that God's brought us through. Some been through sickness, trials, and suffering. I thank the Lord. He's blessed us still in the midst of it all. We could have lost the faith. Oh, yes, we could have, oh, Lord. And we could have failed, failed from His grace. But now we all can say that we're still here and it's by the grace, the grace of God.
2020 was a year of, uh, it, it was a year where we really didn't focus on so much being somewhere at a certain time. It was like God slowed everything down. So where people thought that it might be a year of clear vision and we kept hearing these kind of things, it was really a year of introspection for us. And uh, we, we saw it as a situation where everything was shown that everything that we thought was important was shown not to be so important. And I think that was God's way of telling us to look inside of ourselves and understand who we are as people and people of God. So I felt that 2020 was just a year of, of vision, but it was a year of vision in a different way. It wasn't a year of clear vision, but it was a year of envisioning what the future has for us. And so we finished the year strong, 2020. As we go into 2021, I think that that's going to allow us to activate some of the things that God put inside of us in the year 2020. And by activation, I mean, he's simply going to allow us to grow in the word and grow in our faith and grow in our, the ways that we share what we can share with the world. In 2020, we were, we were uh, in 2019, we were bound by four walls. In 2020, we began to imagine what the church could be if we had to exist without four walls. And so now we're in that space. And in 2021, I expect us to grow even more in that way. So I think that it's important for every believer, wherever you are, whoever you are, to understand that God has placed something in you in 2020. He's given you an opportunity to review that thing that he's placed in you. And in 2021, he's expecting you to activate it so that you can be the best you can be um, in this world that we are living in today. And certainly with the way things are happening and moving so fast um, around us, the ability to slow down and just take a look at it from a holistic standpoint was a blessing in disguise. And so I'm, I'm encouraged by finishing strong in 2020 and looking forward to activation. 2020 was a heck of a year. Um, the best thing I can come up with is that 2020 was like, for me, the perfect vision. 2020 means that we have perfect vision. And so 2020 was my year of clarity, it was my year for God to show himself and for him to to be first and to for me to recognize what it was that I needed to do within my household first. And so a lot of times, you know, being on 
um, quarantine forced me at home and it forced me to look at those things that needed to be redone in the house to help with the children. So it was a lot of things that was birthed in that. And, and so God used that for clarity for me. And so as I continue to think about the ones that we've lost and, and, and how our, our, our global economy is and how things are now, the only thing that I can say is moving forward into 2021, God is, and he will, and we will prevail in that. As I walk into 21, I'm gonna walk with high levels of faith and knowing that God is going to do what he says he's going to do. years that I had experienced. Um, I know for some people there was a lot of hard times, there was a lot of loss, there was a lot of tragedy, um, but for me I took on that year in a different way. I took on that year as a blessing. Um, 2020 was such a blessing to me. I was able to um, just commune with God even the more I was able to spend time with myself even the, the more I was able to find out even the more who God had called me to be and what he had called me to do 
Um, as one of my COVID collection shirts says, pandemics perfects purpose. I allowed that pandemic that we experienced to perfect my purpose even the more. I allowed that everything that we were experiencing for me to tear down things that I no longer wanted to be around, tear down things that I no longer wanted to hinder me from my purpose and my destiny, and then to begin to restore what God has called me to do, restore who God has called me to, to be, restore relationships, whether they were friendships, family, restore whatever it is that God was calling me to. And in 2020, that was the pro that was the start of a new foundation laid for the new year that is coming. You know, I, I can remember in the beginning everybody had their slogans. They said 2020 perfect vision. They said 2020 it's a new decade. And yes, it was a new decade. But if you think about the beginning of a thing, sometimes in the beginning it's not all peaches and cream. Sometimes in the beginning it's not all glitter and gold. In the beginning you have to to learn how that year is gonna be. In the beginning, you have to learn, learn the strategies that you need to use. In the beginning, you have to learn the, the ways about that year. So that's what we had to learn about 2020. We had to be shut down. We had to learn new hygiene. We had to learn new sanitation purposes. We had to put on new gear. We had to have new armor in 2020. So with this new year, we, we've already, we've already been um, built up to to face the new things. We, we already know what's coming forth. So for the new year, we the foundation is laid and we are ready to move forward. We have been perfected in our purpose. We are now being detoured in our destiny. So for me, I said that I'm going to turn it up a notch because I surprised myself in this last year, 2020, I accomplished things on my vision board. I accomplished things that I did not even set on my vision board. So for 2021, I'm going to go even further. I'm going to turn it up a notch. I am not going to let anything hinder me or stop me from perfecting my purpose. I'm not going to let anything stop me from being detoured to my destiny. I'm going to do exactly what it is that God has called me to do. Because I believe that in this last year, He has He wanted to sit us down and help us to understand that it was not about us. It was not about the hustle and bustle up in the ways of the world, but it was about the inside of us. It was about what's in our homes, what's in our natural homes and in our spiritual homes and what it is that we have inside of us. How can we utilize what we have inside of us for his people and for him? And not just in the church house, but over the airways. How can we use that? Um, I'm gonna calm down because I feel like I'm doing a little preaching but uh, <laughs> but yes so he just want us to know that that we have what he has given us already in us but how are we gonna put it forth how are we gonna let the tires meet the ground how are we gonna plow the soil as they say so it's time for us to do that in this next year so I want to encourage you that even if you did experience tragedy God is calling you to triumph in this next year even if you did experience loss God is gonna give you your gains for the loss that you've experienced and I just pray that you have a awesome year I pray that you are blessed by this message thank you and have a happy new year Church, come on, let's go. It's because.
you for your kindness to me. Yes, thank you for your healing virtue that's even filling this room right now. And the louder it gets, the more intense, the more I praise. And the harder it gets, the harder I praise. I know my victory is on the way. The louder it gets, the more intense, the more I praise. The harder things get, yeah, and it's hard right now. I know, girl, my victory's on the way. The louder it gets, the more the enemy turns up the heat. What are you gonna do? Will you still lift up a standard of praise? was an enlightening experience for me, a learning experience for me. Um, I had a lot of challenges, deaths, family illnesses, but I'm grateful and thankful that God allowed me to see it through. And stepping into 2021, I'm just looking to be more strengthened in my faith with the Lord and that I would be able to accomplish all the things that God would want me to accomplish this year. For me, 2020 was a year of shifts, but it was also a year of gratefulness because so many things happened that made me have to like shift how I thought or shift how I did things, but it also made me grateful for what I have and what I was able to do. Um, so stepping into 21, 2021, I'm just expecting God to allow me to be able to go with the flow and also um, seek him to birth new things that will flourish even if there are shifts going on around me in my life. 2020 was an interesting year. It was a year of challenges for a lot of people. We had the virus, the pandemic that went around. There were people who were uh, fighting on every side. And thank goodness that most people came together and did the things that they were supposed to do. And also what I saw was a resurgence in the family structure. I enjoy seeing husbands and wives come together, wanting to see that their children were raised in the way that they should be raised and that they were communicating with each other. And as they were communicating with each other, they were also seeking God. And, and that is important to me because we all need to seek his face on a daily basis. And in 2021, I, my expectation is that we continue to see the same thing going on. We continue to see the strengthening of the family. We continue to see that people are praying together and coming together and seeing about each other and also putting God first. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hey, we're grateful for you joining us back after all of that. Wasn't that a blessing? Amen. I'm excited about it. Excited about stepping into this new year. Excited about your life and, and your family and what God is about to do for us in this season. But I'm also excited about the Word of God. I want to preach the Word to you today. But before I do this evening, can we make our declaration, our final declaration of 2020? Say it with me, loud and proud. This is my Bible, my weapon of choice, and my heart is locked and my spirit is loaded. It makes me a living, breathing, walking, talking, anointed weapon of mass destruction. I shall overcome every obstacle. I will seize every opportunity. I will walk in purpose and arrive at destiny. I'll never be the same in Jesus name. Listen, for your hearing, to rehearsing your hearing, I want to jump in the book of Joshua chapter three. I was in Joshua a lot this year. 
But I wanted to be uh, to bring you back to this particular scripture because I, I really believe this helps sets the tone for where we're going into 2021. It is found in uh, the 13th chapter, 13th verse, I'm sorry, of the third chapter of Joshua, the New Living Translation. It says, the priest will carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth. As soon as their feet touch the water, the flow of the water will be cut off upstream and the river will stand up like a wall. So the people left their camp to cross the Jordan and the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. It was the harvest season and the Jordan was overflowing its banks. But as soon as the feet of the priests who were carrying the Ark touched the water at the river's edge, the water above that point began backing up a great distance away at a town called Adam, which is near Zarethan, and the water below that flowed on to the Dead Sea until the riverbed was dry. Then all the people crossed over near the town of Jericho. Just for a simple subject today, I just want to tell you we're stepping into our harvest season. Stepping into our harvest season. Glory to God. I, I am excited about this text and we're going to get to where we're stepping, but we have to set the table first. This is the transitional moment of the children of Israel. This is the beginning of their stepping into their promise. Because it's something you need to understand. This was not them just coming out of Egypt. Generations have passed since they came out of Egypt. And they were walking around a wilderness lost for some time. They felt lost. They, they felt like they didn't have a home. They, didn't, they weren't really walking in their purpose and they were migrating from place to place. Nothing to really call their own, nothing to really lay their hands on and felt like they just did not fit. I'm talking to some people that have felt like they were misfits. Like we just came out of the Christmas season and you might feel like you've been on the island of misfit toys and you feel like you're not really, uh, things aren't really working well for you. But I love what God says. Earlier in this chapter, it does not start, this is not the first uh, verse in the chapter. Earlier in the chapter, God is talking to Moses, I'm talking to Joshua about how he is with him like he was with Moses. He said that in chapter one, he reiterates this in this chapter because he says that in this, this day, in this season, in this moment, I'm about to magnify you as a leader and I'm going to do miracles among you too and then I'm going to drive out your enemies. Glory to God. Glory to God. So remember those three things. He says, I'm going to magnify you as a leader, right? He says, today I'm going to do this for you. I'm, I'm going to magnify you as a leader. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to do miracles in you, and I'm going to drive out your enemies. I'm going to do miracles, but I'm going to drive out your enemies as well. So these three things are occurring on this particular day of transition. This particular day where they're stepping into a different season. This particular day where the thing that was keeping them from walking in purpose and walking in destiny was about to move out of their way. God told them, he gave them a word and said something is about to change. Can you do me a favor in the chat? Type the word change in the chat. I need you to type that word because you need to understand that until you accept that change is necessary, change won't happen. Not the way you want it to happen. Things always change. You say, Pastor, things always change. They do always change, but I'm talking about the kind of drastic change that is a reset. That is a reboot that reestablishes you, that positions you and places you in a better place, that positions you, you hear me say this all the time, in your next season, at your next level, walking into your next victory. God wants to do that for you. He is going to make you a better leader because of the word of God. And when we meditate on that word day and night, it gives us a better picture of who we are and it helps us to become better leaders. When we apply the word of God, we are better leaders. Leaders of great leaders have principles that they that they that they practice, right? They have core principles that you can't shake them from. Anybody who does not have a strong core, glory to God, has weak is weak everywhere else. That's what they tell you even in working out. You gotta do core work. Because if you don't do core work, nothing else really matters. 
Core helps your stability. If you got a good core, you're able to do things that keep you stable. I want to get into all of that, yet we're going to get on the other side of this new year before we start talking about working out, okay? But he said, I'm going to make you a great leader. He says, I am going to do miracles among you. And he says, I'm going to drive out your enemy. Now, now how many of you want at least those three things going into 2021? I don't know about you, but I want to be a better leader than I was this year. I, I, in, order to, in order to be a better leader, I'm going to give you a principle that I share with my leaders all the time. Leaders are readers. If you're not reading, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about reading for fun or reading trivial. I'm talking about reading in your particular genre, whatever you're doing, whatever you're called to do. Are you reading books that energize your thinking, that cause you to ask questions, that cause you to study more, that cause you to dig deeper? God wants you to be a better leader this year. Leaders lead by example. What example are you setting? What, what are you doing? How are you taking your, your life to the next level? He says, I want you to be a better leader. Leaders do things. Leaders lead. He says, today I'm going to cause you to lead your people to do something they have never done before. So I'm also, I'm also going to do miracles amongst you. I'm going to, I'm going to do what I, if you do what you do, I'm going to do what I do. Glory to God. I want to shout because of that, because I thank God when he does what he does. But God sometimes will wait till I do what I need to do because it's, it's a partnership. You need to understand that that word needs to be a part of your, your vocabulary going into 2021. You need to understand that you aren't in this by yourself. You, it, when we're saved and we're born again and we're believers, we have a partnership with God. We are in partner with, partnership with God, in covenant with God. When we're in covenant with God, God says, if you keep your part of the covenant, I'll keep my part of the covenant, and victory is assured. He says, I'm going to do great things among you. He says, if you understand, yes, 2020 was I mean, yeah, 2020 was challenging. 2020 was a piece of work. 2020 did, you know, challenge us at our core and, and was harsh in some areas and was eye-opening other areas. I mean, if you look at the arc of this year, we saw everything from people standing in food lines. We gave out 5,000, 5,000 uh, boxes of food this, this summer. 5,000, 500 boxes of pizza this summer, 500. We gave away significant amount of food to bless our community. We blessed nursing homes. We blessed families. We blessed seniors. We were a blessing to so many families this year because we, we had to take up our, how we lead in our community to the next level. It causes us to, God, when God is partnership with you and partnership with you, he opens up opportunities for you to be, be a blessing. Amen. Amen. That's what he does. He causes us to be a blessing to other people. So he's going to do great things. He's going to cause miracles to happen. There were some miracles that happened in this ministry this year. God performed miracles this year. We're going to show you a miracle. We're going to show you a miracle after the service, after this end of the service. He's going to bless you. But God is doing miracles. And he does miracles when we lead. When we lead, when we step out there and we operate on faith, God responds to that. When we're responsible, God responds to that. When we're obedient, God responds to that. So how are we going to move into 2021 and not be obedient? We got to be obedient to God. If you're going to lead, lead by example. Lead by following God. Let them do miracles among you because guess what? I don't know about you, but I'm in need of a miracle. I believe God's going to do some things that are going to restore the church in 2021. That's going to fill the building in 2021. This is the last New Year's Eve I want to preach in front of nobody. In front of, I'm talking about publicly in front of no one. No one's in the building with me. It's just me filming this so I can preach a word to you. Yes, you are somebody, and the people I'm talking to are people, but I don't want to be in an empty room again on another New Year's Eve. So God needs to do a miracle. We need God to do a miracle. We need vaccines to, that are trusted to flour, flourish through our community so that people can take them and trust them and that we can lift up each other and encourage each other. Glory to God. So yes, yes, I'm gonna do miracles. And then he says, I'm going to drive out your enemies. It starts today. He didn't do all of that that day. It just began. God's not going to do everything on New Year's Day. 
But New Year's Day marks the day where everything changes. I feel like Joshua. When Joshua was talking to the children of Israel, what he said to them, he says, today God will begin to do miracles amongst us. And as God began to do miracles and, and, and the Jordan was going to open up and Jericho was going to fall and battles were going to be won and moons and suns were going to stand still in the sky and all kinds of great and glorious things God was going to do on behalf of the children, it had to have a starting point and I'm telling you right now I believe that it is time for us to level up I believe that God is about to open up some opportunities for us and it begins at looking at my Gucci is almost that time it's going to begin the first day of 2021 and we're going to walk in this thing just like the children of Israel walked up to the Jordan River they walked up I love the word of God says they walked up and stepped at to the edge of the water Right now, we're at the edge of 2021. We're right at the edge of it. We're stepping up right to the edge of it. But are we going to stand at the edge, just treating this year like it's 2020, or are we going to step in? I'm stepping in. How are you stepping into 2021? How are you stepping into 2021? Are you stepping into 2021 like a leader? Are you stepping into 2021 with purpose? on your mind are you stepping into 2021 believing god for miracle signs of what are you stepping into 2021 believing that this is going to be your year are you going to be like I, I love it are you going to be like jacob jacob held on to the bible said he wrestled with god all night he wrestled to the breaking of the day he wrestled and said i am not going to let go until something changes until the blessing comes into my life some of you that are watching right now i need to tell you you let go too soon yep 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 i'm telling you you let go of your dreams too soon you let go of your marriage too soon you let go of your education too soon you let go of your business too soon you gave up too quick and too soon and that's why you feel like you feel today that's why you feel like a failure but I'm telling you you can't let go tell somebody in the chat don't let go I know Elsa says let it go no I'm telling you don't let it go don't let go of your dreams don't let go of your vision don't let go of your ministry don't let go of your marriage don't let go of your job don't let go of your faith hold on to your faith Step up. Step up. They stepped up carrying the Ark of the Covenant. They stepped up being led by God. They stepped up being obedient to God. And the Bible says when they stepped in the water, things moved. Watch. I love what it says. It says that the top of the water, when they stepped in, it was harvest season. They said when the water was overflowing, it was the most difficult point to cross. God took them there at the most difficult moment to step in it. And some of you have had the most difficult year you've ever had. But I'm telling you something. Step in it. I, I don't care how bad it's been. I don't care how tough it's been. God is saying if you just step in it, you can take control of this thing. You can get control. Take control back. I want somebody in chat to say take control. Take control back. Step into this thing. Step into it. He stepped into it. And when he stepped into it, they, they, they stepped to the brink of it. The Bible said they stepped into it. And that water, I love what it says. It says it began to back off. It began to back off into another town. Glory to God. God was showing them that if you just take the right step, I'm going to cause some stuff to back up off you. I'm going to cause sickness to back up off you. I'm going to cause poverty to back up off you. I'm going to cause debt to back up off you. I'm going to cause depression to back up off you. I'm going to cause addiction to back up off you. I'm causing it all to back up because it is not going to drown you in this season. Glory to God. It's not going to drown you. 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 It's about to open up. There's an opening. You're, you're stepping into, I said this earlier this year, you're stepping into your opening. Ah, the Bible says it opened up for them and it was completely dry. 
every drop of water was gone. God moved everything. It was not even a remnant to, that, that would remind you that the water was there. When God opens up 2021 and we get into it fully, you're not even going to remember what happened this year in 2020. You're not going to even think about it because all of the drama, all of the problems, all of the trials, all of the tribulations are going to move out of your way. They're moving right now. And as they're moving, you, you're about to step into something new. You're about to step in on this dry ground. You're about to step in on a new path. You're about to step in this thing. You're going to march through this thing. You're going to walk through this thing. And the Bible says when they got in the middle of the, of, of the Jordan River, when the, wa when the water was moved, there were 12 smooth stones. They were 12 stones. They grabbed 12 stones. They grabbed 12 stones for a testimony, one for every tribe. But I will submit to you, those 12 stones stood one for every month of 2020. You're, you're taking your testimony back. When, when we get across this new year, when we step into this new year, we're stepping into this new year with a testimony. We're stepping into this new year with a, no matter how many months we had to go through to get to this year. All, every single month of 2020 had its own challenge, had its own trial, its own tribulation. But we made it. 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 We made it because we stepped in on purpose we stepped in not by accident we're stepping into 2021 on purpose we're marching and stepping and following the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord and we're delighting in his pathway we're delighting in the way that we're going we're moving forward and god is going to get the glory god is getting the glory out of this the bible said they stepped in and things moved and things shifted. Ah, I felt that lift up in my spirit. God is about to cause you to move. And when you move in obedience, things have got to shift. Some things are about to shift for you. They're about to move on your behalf. God is about to open things up so that you will walk into your next victory. You will step into this harvest season. I'm telling you right now, you're leveling up on tonight. Come on, how many of you feel stirred in your spirit right now? You feel stirred that God is about to do a new work in you. You feel stirred up. Glory to God. There's a stirring happening right now. There is a shifting happening right now. There is a movement happening right now. And God is going to see you through. Glory to God. He's going to see you through. He's going to see you through. The same God that brought you to is going to bring you through. They stood and they gave their testimony by carrying those stones and setting up an altar. And they gave God praise because they knew had it not been for God, they would not have made it through. And some of you, though, every month, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Every month was hard. It was difficult, but you made it. You got a stone for every single one of those months. And you got a testimony that you made it through, no matter how tough it was, no matter how insurmountable it seemed, you still made it through. So if he did it before, he could do it again. And we'll move into 2021 with purpose on our mind that we are going to win this thing. If, if, if you're going to win this thing, come on, begin to tell them. Just type the word, we win, we win, we win, we win. Here's what I need to do. Put those hands right now. Father, I declare right now in Jesus' name over everyone that's watching and listening right now that this next season they're about to step into is going to be a season of overflow. It's going to be a season of harvest. It's going to be a season where things are going to back up out their way. It's going to be a season where depression backs up off them, sickness backs up off them. They're going to step into this new year with a, with a dogged faith, with a determined belief. They're going to trust you as never before in Jesus' name. And I decree God as they step away that God, just as that Jordan opened up for the children of Israel, it also closed up behind them. That God, when we step out of this year, that it's going to close up behind us and we'll never have to deal with any of these issues again in Jesus name glory to God it is so it is so in Jesus name Whew. the message bless you come on give God praise in the chat give God praise in the chat 
listen, as we prepare to step into this new season, the step into overflow, here is our opportunity to sow this seed of transition as we move from 2020 to 2021. And this seed is going to be a different seed because it's going to sow into a different decade. I mean, we're starting really to begin at one. 20 is really the end of this decade. We're starting a new decade. And as we start this new thing, you can't take old mindset into the new thing. You need to position yourself. Somebody say reposition. You have to reposition yourself to repossess and take back everything the enemy has stolen from you that he will give up everything that canker worm and the pommel worm made. That he must give it up. So I want you to grab a seed. I want you to prepare to sow. Whether you're downloading the iChurch Anywhere app, you're texting to give, you're giving a GiveLify, PayPal, Cash App, you're about to sow into this word. And however you need to sow into this word, just make sure you say that it's a seed. You're sowing and you're giving a seed, seed offering. Here's what I need you to do when you sow. God's about to tell, he's telling some folk a crazy amount to sow. It's because you don't know what you're about to step into in 2021. So the amount that he's telling you right now is the amount that's going to lead you to that crazy blessing in 2021. So I want to pray with you. Those of you who believe God, lift up that gift. I want you to ask God, God, tell me what should I render? And whatever that amount is, however crazy it is, I mean, it could be 20 or 20,000, whatever God tells you, you give exactly what he tells you to do and watch what that obedience opens up. It is that step. That's the kind of offering you're giving right now. You're giving a seed offering, but that seed offering is that step into the Jordan that's going to open up things. Lift that gift up. Father, I pray for the seed, the sower, the gift, and the giver. I ask that that seed, that I declare over that seed, that seed is an opening seed. That seed is a key seed. That seed is a seed that opens up opportunities for them in 2021, that resets the table, that they will reposition to repossess the land in Jesus' name. And I pray that there's an accelerated anointing on that seed that's going to cause the harvest to meet them before they bat an eye. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Before we get off of here, I also want to extend Jesus to you. If you don't know Jesus, pray this simple prayer with me. Dear Lord, I thank you for sending Jesus. I receive him as my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins, and I am saved. If you just got saved, click the link that says Next Steps in here. Do me a favor, if this blessed you, share this with your family, friends, and loved ones. If um, you're watching our 11, 11 one p.m. service, I want you to join me immediately following service as we count the new year in. Uh, if you're watching our earlier service, we pray God's richest blessings be upon you. Be safe, be secure, and let's all live to impact. I love you.